Mr. President, when I talk to most Oklahomans about pharmaceuticals, about the cost of drugs and going to the pharmacy, they don't think a lot about supply chain issues, though I actually have a bill working on this, and this is an issue we've got to resolve. About 10,000 of the active pharmaceutical ingredients come from communist China. We're very exposed there. That's a very big risk. We've got to work to be able to make sure that we can get access to our pharmaceuticals without being dependent on China to do that. But that's a, that's a risk that people want to solve, but they don't really talk about most. People most of the time talk about the cost of a drug and their availability at their local pharmacy. Let me talk about both of those. Because as, as ironic as it sounds, they're tied up together, not in the way people will think about most often. Because many people think drug companies produce drugs and then they sell it to the pharmacy and then the pharmacy sells the drug. And they think that's the way it works. It's really not actually. Those are two elements. There are drug companies that do research, develop the drugs and do all the clinical trials and get it approved and they're ready to go. But then there's a, whole, a wholesale network that's back there that actually handles the distribution. And there's this group that almost no one's heard of called the Pharmacy Benefit Manager. Now, the, the Pharmacy Benefit Manager actually oftentimes sets the real price for the drug because the drug company may produce it at one price. The pharmacy is ready to be able to sell it at a price, but there's this group in between, the Pharmacy Benefit Manager, that they actually control how it works. Now, if I'm at the pharmacy in Atoka, Oklahoma, the patients that are coming into that rural, beautiful community, they just know what they're paying at the counter. But if you go behind the counter and talk to the pharmacist there, or in any number of other communities there, they'll tell you they're struggling as an independent pharmacy, especially in rural areas, because there's a game happening with the pharmacy benefit manager that's to the benefit of that what's called a PBM and to the detriment of the local pharmacy and of the patient. This is an issue that's gotta be resolved. About 80% of all of the drugs that move across the country right now are managed by three different pharmacy benefit managers. Now, I'm not opposed to competition, but here's what they've actually done over the last several years. The insurer has purchased both the insurance company the pharmacy benefit manager, the group that actually does the purchasing of the drugs, and then often the retail pharmacy as well for some of those big chain retail pharmacies. So they literally own the entire network there and they can make money through the whole network. Okay, again, I'm, I'm a free market capitalist. I don't have an issue with people doing that, but here's what's actually happening. The leverage then of the big pharmacies that they then own all the rest of the chain there, if you're not in their group, you're facing some real consequences and a real squeeze because they now set the price and tell you how it works. Let me give you a couple of examples and things that I believe we need to address that I have been working on for years and that finally the Finance Committee of the United States Senate is actually taking on this issue. One of them is another little code thing that most people don't know it exists, called DIR fees. This direct and indirect remuneration fee is how the whole process works behind the scenes at an independent pharmacy. Let me give you an illustration and, and, and try to take this off the top shelf. So let's say you're a company and you do a manufacture a product or you're a retail and you sell a product that's out there. So you sell a product, whatever it may be, I don't care if it's a shirt or a couch, whatever it may be, you're gonna ship it out. You do the shipping and you anticipate once the shipping is done, you're reimbursed for the shipping. Your job is to be able to retail, sell it, ship it out, and then you get the reimbursement for that. But what would happen in your business if you sold it, shipped it, and then after you shipped it and paid for the shipping, someone came back to you and said, actually, that may have cost you $50 to ship that. I'm only going to give you $20 for the shipping because I didn't like the way you did the shipping. I didn't like who you did the shipping with. I didn't like the box that you put it in. I preferred a different box. So you lose $30 in the shipping because you didn't put it in the right kind of box. So here's what you do. Next month, 
when you're shipping, you make sure you put it in the box that the, whoever this is that's reimbursing you likes that certain kind of box. You put it in that box, you ship it out, but then you wait for the reimbursement, but instead the company comes back and says, oh no, we've changed our mind. Now we like a different color of box. So yeah, you put it in the right kind of box, but we like it in a different color of box. So we're gonna reimburse you $10, even though it costs you 50. Now I know this may sound absurd, but welcome to the world of DIR fees for pharmacies. Here's what happens. They purchase the drug and get the drug and they're ready to sell it. They sell it to the consumer. The consumer at the counter pays them for it. They've got their money from the consumer. It goes out the door. And then a month or a quarter or sometimes even a year later, the pharmacy benefit manager sends a notification to the pharmacy and says, oh, I didn't like the way that you did that. It wasn't a quality thing. It was just how they did it. Sometimes they'll say, well, you really should have prescribed two drugs to this person and you just did one. Now the pharmacist doesn't choose what drugs are going out to the, to the patient that's there. The doctor does. The pharmacist just fills the script. But the pharmacy benefit manager may say, oh, you need to have sold them more drugs than what you did, so we're gonna reimburse you less for this. And they literally change the rules after the sale is done, and so they'll reimburse them. Sometimes they'll reimburse them less than the actual drug cost to the pharmacist. So the pharmacist actually loses money on filling a prescription for this person. But they don't know that until months later. That's what's happening right now in small pharmacies across America. Because the pharmacy benefit managers are focused in on how can they make more money even if it closes down rural independent pharmacies? What's interesting is several of my rural pharmacies have told me they'll get this change of rules where suddenly now they're selling drugs or sold a long time ago a drug to someone for less than what they're actually being reimbursed now. They'll often get that notification and then a week later get a notification from that big pharmacy group saying, hey, by the way, if you wanna join our retail chain and close down your chain, we'll buy you out. It's a great way to put a little pressure squeeze on them to say, we're gonna reimburse you less than the cost of your drugs unless you're one of our pharmacies, and then maybe we'll do a little bit better. Listen, this is the United States of America. We like competition, but we also like fair competition, where people are actually reimbursed for the cost of their actual product they're actually able to survive, and especially in rural areas, that independent pharmacy is able to thrive. Because in rural areas across our country, there's not a lot of access to healthcare. So when people have a question about their drugs and about their healthcare, where do they go? The pharmacist in their small town, that's where they go. DIR fees, from these pharmacy benefit managers are directly putting at risk the survival of rural pharmacies across America and across my state, and I'm gonna do whatever I can to make sure those companies don't drive out of business local rural pharmacies in my state, because my people in my state need that support in their local area. They may wanna do mail order pharmacy for some things. It's very convenient, it's great. If they choose to do that, it's fine. But if they're taking five drugs, they want to talk to somebody about this and what are going to be the effects. And that's not going to happen with mail order. That's going to happen with somebody behind the counter that's going to talk to them and walk them through the process. That's what we need to be able to do. It's not rocket science and it's not onerous. It's standard performance metrics that the rules don't change on an independent pharmacy. They know what the rules are and they don't change, especially after the sale has already been done. The ability to be able to sell a product and actually at least have some profit, not lose money every time you be able to sell a product, shouldn't be a radical idea. The pharmacist is not getting to pick the price on this product. People think the pharmacist is the one making all the money. The pharmacist is not the one who picks the price on this product. That's set by someone else, and if they literally have to sell it at a price less than what they can buy it for, that's not right. They're trying to be able to help their neighbors. Let me give you another example. 
Another issue I've been working on for years on this. This is a game played between the pharmacy benefit managers and the pharmaceutical companies that actually produce the drugs. Most drugs, when they come out, are remarkable. The engineering and the science in modern medicine and the technology that it takes to be able to go through the clinical trials, get something approved to show it's not only safe but effective is remarkable science. And there's some great researchers doing that, and it's incredibly expensive to do. Because that's incredibly expensive, in the United States, we protect the patent rights of that new drug. So a drug, when it comes out, is really expensive when it first comes out because we want that company to make enough money to be able to pay for all the research that they put into producing it and make a little profit, or else they're not going to produce more drugs and more innovation. That's how it works. But that, that patent is protected for a season, usually around a decade, that it's protected for them. After that, then the drug can have drug competition. Those are called generics or biosimilars. Now, most folks know in their pharmacy, if they walk in, they get a prescription from their doctor, and they walk in and they say, hey, I got this script from my doctor. The pharmacist will say it's a brand drug. Many people will say, is there a generic of that? What they're really asking is, is there a cheaper version of that? Because for almost everybody, for your plan from your, far, uh, from your insurance company, you've got one price for the brand drug and a cheaper price for generic. You know why? Because generic drugs are cheaper. That's why. For everybody in the whole value chain. But here's what's happening. Sometimes people will walk into a pharmacy and they'll say, is there a generic version of this? And their pharmacist will respond back to them, there is a generic version, but it's the same price as the brand. It makes you pause for a minute and say, well, that's strange. Why is the generic the same price as the brand? If that's ever happened to you, here's why that is. Because the drug company has worked with the pharmacy benefit manager to say when competition comes, when the generic comes, if you'll list the competition on the higher price, what's called branded tier, we'll give you a kickback every time our drug is sold in the brand. So you'll make additional money if you'll list the competition at a higher price. What does that do? That causes every consumer in America to have to pay more at their pharmacist. It also affects the United States budget because also Medicare is affected by that as well. This is a simple fix. Generic drugs should be on the generic tier. Branded drugs should be on the branded tier for sales. This is not rocket science again. This is straightforward consumer protection. This is an issue I've pushed on for a long time that I get a lot of pushback from. As you would expect, the pharmacy benefit managers and the drug companies aren't big fans of this. I have nothing in opposition to drug companies. I want them to continue to thrive, produce new drugs, and to be able to make a profit on the production of those new drugs. But when they're doing something to the consumer to drive up the price when they could get a cheaper price, that's bad form and bad competition. Let's fix that. Next week, the Finance Committee is going to take up a whole series of bills and options on pharmacy benefit managers. We need an intermediary. The drug companies aren't set up to be able to sell straight to the pharmacy. I don't have a problem with somebody being in between. I'm not trying to kill that but we do need to make sure that it doesn't hurt the consumer, doesn't hurt the federal budget, and actually works for everybody in the process. I know this is stuff behind the scenes and everyone just wants to say, how do we get the price of drugs cheaper? And there are even folks that say, let's just have the federal government take over all this pricing and the federal government will just set the price for everything. That'll work beautifully. Well, I always laugh and say, listen, if you think the federal government can solve every problem, try to get your passport right now. Because right now it takes about 18 weeks to get a passport, and it used to take four weeks. Federal government's not the solution to everything on this. Protected free markets are a good solution to this. Competition will work if we allow the markets to actually work, but if someone's in the middle controlling all of that, that's something we need to intervene and in to say, let's have free and fair markets that are out there to get down the price of drugs. Because there are generics, there are biosimilars that are out there that will bring down the price if they're allowed to get to market. So let's make sure they can actually get to market 
and get down the price and let's protect the ability for rural independent pharmacies to still take care of their patients. Those are their neighbors. They care about them and they wanna make sure they can still be there to be able to care for those folks. We've got work to do. And I'm glad the Senate's finally taken this up. Working on this for years, this is an area that we need to address. With that, I yield the floor.